given the opportunity to talk to you today. I'm not sure I am able to talk to you today. We'll all find out together, I don't I believe in the Bible. I've made that choice. Mm -hmm. I like that book. I think that book speaks the truth. <laughs> and in my reading and the study of that book, I believe I found out the truth I'm going to talk to you about today. There are several scriptures we could have read, and we'll read them later, and you'll see how they can or maybe they don't do attach themselves to what I'll have to say. The first thing the Bible tells you is who God is. He is the awesome, incredible creator, God and Father. And I stop way short of who he is. <coughs> And I know that he wants me to know him. What little I can understand in this mind that I have, he expects me to seek him. To try to get to know him. To ask questions about him. To read the Bible and try to find answers about him. And I believe that when he created this world, he did it because he had a plan. I believe that he is, his plan included each person. As hard as that able, is able to believe, when you see the difference in cultures in this world today, how can you believe that? Well, it's because we're living in the way we understand things, and God isn't. I think. And God knew we were going to be now. He knew he made something that could decide something that was wrong. And he called it sin. And he started telling us about that hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And we can read a lot of that history. Not only in the Bible, but all through the world history. Because his plan, you see, included the whole world. Including his history. But since he knew that we would need help, he sent his son in the fullness of time, and it was just right. And his son came and lived among us and died on the cross, was resurrected and went back to heaven. <coughs> now you don't have to believe that. However, historical record will bear up the fact that Jesus was there. That Jesus was crucified. That Jesus was resurrected. And his purpose in doing that took care 
of the sin problem in this world. There is no longer, as far as God is concerned, there is no longer a sin problem in this world. Now we need to quickly say, is there a sin problem in this world? Oh, oh, oh. my. Incredible. However, let's go there. Let's back up out of there and say that when I came along, he said, oh, there's Lowell. Now I'm better plan for you, Lowell. I made you win those first two little cells up together. And right then I had you all figured out. <laughs> yeah, right then I had you all figured out. And I put in those chromosomes just exactly what I wanted there. So when you came out and started forming, you formed the way I told you to form. <laughs> With my body style and my face style and you name it. My thinking style. And he said, I planned for you. And I made sufficient help for you. I'm taking care of your sin problem. I have laid out very carefully that if you would just obey what I tell you to do, you would prosper, live a long life, and I'll take you home glory. But this is his idea. And the plan for my life is his plan for my life. Not my plan for my life. And we have to realize that. That's hard to do. We would like to think that we've got it right. You ever feel like you're right? <laughs> Did you ever feel like you were right? May I suggest to you that any sane person feels like they're right? And therefore, I put a great stop in how I think. Since I'm right. But you know what? I need to wake up and find out that the plan for my life was his plan and not mine. You mean he's got a better plan than me? Yeah. Might we believe that? Ah. I might have my doubts there. After all, I like my plan. I'm right. But the Bible tells me there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, general speaking, mankind. And the end thereof is the ways of death. End thereof is the ways of punishment. Well then, Father, how do I figure out this plan for me? Ask for it. Ask for it. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. He might you ask for it. He's got all the other for you. Forgiveness of sin, acceptance, you know. There isn't anything now between me and you. Except you. Because I will not make you do it. I've had this plan for you since the eternity was begun. And I will not make you do this plan. 
If you are doing your own thing, how do you just go right ahead and do it? Realizing the consequence. Which in doing, you would be a fool. I would be a fool. To take my plan for what I know instead of God's plan and what He knows, check that one off. God knows what's best for me. That was in his plan. Now, don't get me wrong. There are things about his plan that I understand and I like. And I'll just main, mention maybe more than one, but mainly this one, and that is the fact that he loved me. I read in his word that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall not bury for an everlasting life. I know that he loves me. He tells me that again and again and again and again. He shows me that again and again. I can't tell you how many times I've begun convinced because of something happening to me that he loves me. He loves me. Well, that should help me get over my pride and accept his wisdom, don't you think? But you know, I still have to come up against the idea that I'm a sinner because of my pride. I'm a sinner because I think I'm right. I'm a sinner because I choose my own way. Not his. Mine. You see, I'm not God. That isn't too much of a surprise. I'm not God. God is God. When I found out about him, reading the Bible, I found out that, wow, he is an awesome God. <laughs> Great and wonderful is he. So I can accept God for who he is. If I can get my mind around what I know about God, I can. I can understand the way he loves me. No, I hear that. I can understand what love is. My mother gave me love. My dad gave me love. I've had many, many people give me love. I even have a wife who gives me love. Wonderful, wonderful love. In which I feel totally comfortable. And in these days that I'm having, when I cry out to her like I did last night, she comforts me. That's love. That's love. When I need help, But I don't even need help. I can do it myself. But it takes me a long time because these fingers don't work like they used to. But they still work. <coughs> you know, the button, that button right there, might take me five minutes. Nothing works right. Either the button is in the wrong place or the button hole is in the wrong place. <laughs> And if those two things are lined up, then my fingers won't work. Then I have to go back and find the button all again. I know none of you had that experience. So this happens to me. That really is the way it works. <laughs> right down to buttoning that button, God's plan.
Now, I praise God for whatever it was that caused me to become curious about God. Can I get to know him? I mean, in a way that satisfies me? Yeah, he doesn't give no satisfaction. Well, he'll also give me peace. He'll also give me hope. In fact, he wants to ca he wants me to cast all of my care upon him. Every time I have a care, a worry, an anxiety, a pain. Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. <laughs> Get involved with me, Lowell. That's really where help lies. Now, incidentally, I can help you in a larger way. I can help you with doctors. I can help you with climate. I can help you with, oh, just start going on the list. There's all kinds of good things that God has for food. What's wrong with food? I mean, I. We can really meet there, God and I, without any problems at all. I, I mean, I can really enjoy food. There are times now when I don't. I didn't used to be that way. But now there are times when I don't enjoy food. I just don't feel that way about it. I don't know what's happening. I'm becoming more and more convinced that the less I appreciate what's here, the more we'll appreciate what's there. Do I see any difference? Oh. And I really believe we live in a place on earth that's far above most. This is a pretty place to live up here. If you don't believe it, just ask Paul. <laughs> I talk to him, tell a story about you, Paul. He went out and shot his first deer this week and was able to successfully handle the whole situation and fry it up and eat it last night. And it was good. <laughs> that was a good thing, wonderful. He loved it. Now, what I'm talking about is that the devil always comes to us with ideas. He has free access to our minds. He can just come in there any time he wants to. And if we'll listen to him, we'll hear him. He brings doubt. Oh. That really is true. Is that the way it's going to be? Is this what he wants for me? Is this my fault? Is this somebody else's fault? So I work my way through this maze. Of ropes and tangles and <laughs> when I became interested in knowing God, I started asking questions. And 
I'm sure all of you are here right this morning because that's where you are. You're asking questions. Or you wouldn't be here. There's a lot of things to do on Sunday morning in the rain because I'm asking questions. <laughs> but my position here on this is that I just help that because of me, you can help answer some of those questions. And when you look around, I hope that you have the same feeling. Because you're here, you can help answer those questions. I'm very concerned that all of you seek him. I'm very concerned that all of you grow in your knowledge of him. Because then I'll, I, I know that your behavior will change, your lifestyle will change, you'll be a happier individual, you'll be free from the many things that can burden you down, and you'll walk through life with a lot more interesting experience. But it's always back home to your choice. I started asking questions about God when I was about 16. And I asked him for the next 10 years, pretty heavy. Went through college asking questions about God. Boy, did I find some people in that God college who could answer my questions. Wonderful people. I had one man in his 80s that taught the Bible. You know what he told me? He said, Lowell, if you just read the Bible, don't worry about what it means. Don't even worry about what it says. Just read the Bible. <laughs> It'll change you. It'll change you. And I found that true over and over and over again. And I knocked on the door and said, Would you mind if I had a Bible study with you guys? And they'll say, Oh, no, we back but kind of like that. I said, You have to do that. But then I said, Well, that's fine. And incidentally, you always ask. But then, in that event, I watched them start to change. habits that they've had and they didn't like. They don't do anymore. Do all their problems disappear? Oh no. No, 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 no. I'm not saying this is catch all immediately. But I am saying that things start to change. It's just like Jesus. The road the clouds away. God is really intent on helping us. He is really eager to answer our questions. And we doubt him. We doubt him. We don't ask him questions. We think we know. Especially if we can hear it on TV or the internet, or the encyclopedia. There's a lot of wisdom in those things, that's true. There's a lot of knowledge in there, that's true. But most of it is based on man's knowledge. Is that bad? No, not necessarily. I mean, after all, the rock is a rock. That doesn't have to be God, but that's just fact. But the point I'm trying to make is, well, then who made the rock? Did that rock always be here? Oh, I, I, well, maybe it did, but I don't think so. I don't know where that rock came from, etc., etc. Until you get to you. Where did I come from? Why am I here? What is my purpose? 
Dear Lord, help me know. And then, by my finding out your purpose for me, I can function in that purpose. I can do those things, because he knows exactly what I can and what I cannot do. He made me. If you can become convinced of that, you may not be. Lots of people have all kinds of trouble with who made me. How can I be the way I am? I don't like the way I am. I don't think there's anybody that watches his own behavior very long before he comes up with the idea that I don't think I like myself very much. I've made some stupid ideas work to my pain, to my confusion. But I do know, Lord, that when I sit down on a stump and have a chat with you, that you listen to me. And the reason that I know that is because I've discovered something else in your Bible, and it's called faith. And he says, you know what? Where you are here is one place. Where I am here is another place. You know how I said that? My place? By faith. By faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So if I'm going to find out anything about God at all, I've got to believe him. I've got to believe him. <laughs> and what I'll have to believe is the things that I read in his book. I believe it. That's the way it is. Do I understand it? Oh. <laughs> Not very much. In no way can I access the true meaning of the cross. This just takes us one thing. The cross has an incredible ability to transform mankind. It changes the way the Roman government figured out time. Try that trick today. <coughs> and just start going down the line. The cross is a tremendous, in fact, it took over the Roman government in about 300 years. When man figured out that, you know what? The most powerful thing in this world is not fear, is not pain. The Bible tells me that love does not fail. Do I believe that? Yeah, I believe that. Can I fail? Oh, now you put a different face to it. Yes, I can fail. I can be selfish. I can put myself before my wife, before my kids. <coughs> and when I do, I need to realize that I'm sinning. That is love. That's something else. And it'll have its consequence. And it does. And then we're confused again because we're confused about is that, was that God's idea for me or was that my idea for me? Oh, I didn't do that. I'm, what? Break things down a little bit and you'll find out, you know what, I did this and that and that. We're dealing with a situation right now where he didn't have a clue what was going on in her mind. She just had a, an established relationship for months. Maybe years. And he didn't know it. That's how absolutely dense men are. We 
We all are that way. Sorry, Jacob. <laughs> we don't think it's going to happen. That doesn't make it from happening. <clears throat> what makes it happen? Our trying to be nice. Our being kind. Our thinking before we talk. Make a difference between react by the way we react to them. I've told my wife multitude of multitude a lot of times that I love her cooking. If I would add them up, there would be no that, that uh, there would be more than I could number. And I told her one thing, one thing she cooked that I didn't like. <laughs> That truck stood for 140 feet before it got stopped. <laughs> Low. Don't go there. That way. Now she can handle my saying that I didn't like that. <coughs> I was that's how I do it. I don't mean that we can become People that don't communicate our feelings. That's not exactly how we do it. And I'm really good at doing it wrong. I can just smack you in the face with it, you might write it. Oh, it doesn't bother you, does it? But it all boils down to our relationship with God. And that's why it's important to talk to God every day. That's why it's important to build in this area of our relationship with God every day. As much time as you can. If you read the Bible for 10 minutes a day, it's enough time to get started. It's not very long. How many of you read the Bible 10 minutes a day? I hope you do. I don't read the Bible 10 minutes a day. On a daily basis, we read, we read the Bible about five to ten minutes a day. I suppose that's about the time we read the Bible together. So where are you in this cruise through life? I hope that you have become curious. I hope that you have asked God, help me, Jesus. I hope that you have said, Father, I realize I'm a sinner, and I want you to come and take my sin away. I hope that you have realized that the Bible is a source of truth. Now, are there things in there that seem totally wrong? Oh, yes. But if you knew everything you needed to know, you'd understand why they're so horrible. horrible. The Old Testament has stories in it that go beyond belief. No, they don't. They tell you exactly what happens when mankind does not do the will of God. We see it all over the globe, the globe today. When we see a genocide of 100,000 people, atrocious consequences. When we see this country turning away morality like we see it doing, and we don't like that because we think that's God's plan for this country, and I'm not saying that it isn't, I'm saying that Consequence of sin. When we say no to God, there's a consequence. I mean, throw the Bible out of the schools, duh. There's a consequence. When we say we don't want anybody to talk about creation, we want to talk about a, a funny story somebody told here a few years ago. 
I had a sixth grader turn to me one time. We had a university teacher, doctor, in his field. Talk to us about this certain kind of bug. This is an important study in the family. And he said that about three billion years ago, I can't tell you exactly now, I could be wrong, but millions of years, millions of years ago, this bug decided to take his bill and instead of being vertical, he made it horizontal. Now, wouldn't you say that was any story to tell a little child? And make sure that they understood it was a joke. That was a doctor in biology that told us that, and he believed it was real. Well, where's God? He's not there. He's not there. Don't want him there. I can't understand it. The devil can confuse people so atrociously, it goes beyond belief. But I do know that you can't come to know God. I do know that you can follow God. I do know that if you ask God, what do you want me to do? He'll tell you. He might not tell you right away, but he'll show you. You want to know an amazing thing? We have a place for people. And we thought, well, when we retire, we quit going out to people. You know, we'll probably have a pretty quiet week. You're not having one yet. <laughs> Are you going to be home Tuesday? Yeah. Well, good. We thought we might go out. We know this person that needs a home. They, they're here and they live in their car and they, 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 they need, need help. Wonder if you would consider letting them live out there for a while. Oh, by the way, we're going through on the way to Montana. We're going to drop by for a couple of days. Many times, the very day someone left, somebody unexpectedly came in. <clears throat> you know why? Because years ago, we decided we'd build some cabins to keep kids in. Don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> because it was an effort to reach out to a person in need, and God will fill it. And what I'm saying is, we've not had a week yet, including last week. We have a gracious friend that we love very much that's come to see us now for a few days, see? We love her. We've had a lot of fun with her in the past. And she hasn't been to see us for two or three years, but here she comes. Right on time. Just the right time. <laughs> Isn't that great? And that's how we built that house the way it is, so that when I get enough, I can just go across the entryway there and get into my bedroom and let you sit out in the living room. <laughs> And praise God, I haven't had that happen yet. Oh, but I haven't had to get up and leave my company. And it seems like I can't keep from being involved in disgusting things with them. Now you're just like me. You're put here to tell people about what you know and believe. And if you know who God is, if you know that he created the world and he created you, you're his special creation. And if you know he has a plan for your life, and you know you are interested in that plan, and you would like to live it for his glory, Step into the water, my friend. 
is flowing through you. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this gorgeous plan that I can look back in my life now for many years and see it come to beautiful fruition, blooming, fragrance, some things of my own story that's been bad. I can't tell you how much, Lord, I appreciate the fact that you've taken that pain away from the burden. I have a memory of what happened, but I don't have any pain. You've taken that away. I thank you, Father, for the privilege it is to know you, to allow you to come into our lives and find the way you use us for your glory. That is so exciting. And we praise you for that. May each one here be gripped by the beauty of that. And may they be lifted into your presence. And they're told precisely what you want them to do. And may they be curious. And may they be asking questions. And they ask you for Jesus. 